in Rocket League, there are a lot of things that are important, and a lot of important lessons that need to be learned in order for you to play at a high level. In today's video, we will teach some of these important lessons to help you elevate your game. Before we do jump into it, I do just have one quick announcement. Thanks to all of you guys and your support, there are now memberships available on the channel. Which, if you guys don't know what those are, it is basically a way for you guys to support the channel directly. If you look underneath this video, you will see a little join button, and if you click on that, you will see all the different tiers that are available. So if you have the means to and want to support the channel, feel free to check that out, but please be aware that this will not impact the amount or quality of content that all of you guys still receive every single week. Thank you to all of you once again for your continued support, let's hop into learning these very important lessons. Alright, jumping in here with Tim's replay, we're just gonna take a look here and see what we can find. Starting off with a half flip off the kickoff. Teammate's going to go up for that. Good challenge there. One thing right here, if we go faster, we might be able to full beat this guy. As we see this ball bouncing off the ceiling, we can see this guy is still pointed sideways. So if we just full speed forward and jump and use some of our boost, we probably win this ball flat out. Maybe are even able to put this on target, but because we have some slight hesitation here, it ends up just being a 50 instead. So watch out for that. Should be a clean beat here, but we actually take our time approaching the ball and it ends up just being a 50-50. Good jump here. Again, bit of a weak touch, and this is something that we're going to see and we're going to want to work on. If we look at the positioning of our opponents in this situation, they're both flat-footed on the ground facing forward. So the open space on the field is not dropping this ball down right in front of them, but is instead this area here on the backboard if we utilize our boost and get underneath this ball and push it to that backboard it puts the defense in a very awkward situation and allows for an easier approach for our teammates to be able to come forward to take a shot by dropping this ball just down to the ground it puts it right into the possession of the opposing team and doesn't really give our teammates a chance to do much of anything because if we bang that to the backboard, there's a very good chance we have a shooting opportunity. But instead, it just ends up being a partial clear. We do get back on it, so that's good. Good beat here. Not a massive fan of what we do on the landing. So we get this challenge, which is great. The chances of us getting back to this ball with our minimal boost is pretty low. So what we want to do now is utilize what we can to make these guys lives harder because what we don't want to do is we don't want to give them space and possession of the ball we want to try to minimize their ability to make a play as much as possible so in this instance with this ball dropping down land on the wall jump off wave dash get back forward put pressure on this guy maybe steal this boost and try to get back in this guy's face so we can't just take calm control of the ball because we'll see here by kind of flying over to the side now this dude can just catch the ball it's all fine he flicks your one teammate your second teammate's a little too far forward and now all of a sudden it's just a goal so anytime you can have an opportunity to pressure the opponent and make them awkward you really do want to take it i like this rotation around very good a little bit of hesitation from our teammate he gets bumped so in this instance here Okay, cool. We let our teammate go first. That's fine. As soon as I see this, I am just absolutely full sending for this ball. Because he's going to be out of the play. This opponent is focused on this guy. So this ball is currently free. We don't want to allow this guy to come in. We just want to go make a play. Make sure we're dictating how the play is going to go. So this should be a free ball for us. But instead, we wait a little too long. Are a little too patient to see what happens. Now we got to avoid the bump here. We get around, and now it's a free touch. Luckily, it's not a good one. Pinches all the way across the field, but is something you want to look out for. Right here, I'm not a fan of this hesitation. So we can see in our camera, we have no teammates in front of us. So when there are no teammates in front of us, that means it is clear for us to just go for the ball. And again, we are giving Blixty here way too much time to gain control without challenging him. If we look at how loose this ball is, 
This ball is going into the corner. Blixty is currently facing this way. He's going to have to turn around, and that's even if he wants to challenge the ball in the corner. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he wants to let the ball drop. So he's actually just going to turn back to the ground and wait for it to come down. You have the advantage here of being further away, so you can make this read quickly. You just need to go for this ball and apply pressure. This should at the very least be a 50-50 right here in that corner. There's no reason to give up this free possession when we have boost to play with. There's just no reason to give up this space to someone with the ball. I like this patience rotating around. This is fine. Again, this is hesitation as first man. We see this ball is fairly loose. This dude's not getting another touch on it until it gets to the wall. This is free. Just go get this. Use your boost. Go at it and get this ball as it's bouncing off the wall. Do not allow a free touch to our opponents in any situation that we can help it. Because now we're just flat-footed. The ball is over our head. If any of the opponents were prepared for that pass, that should be a goal. Again, very flat-footed here. Just giving up possession to our opponents. This is another instance. We have full boost. Yes, this ball is coming across fairly quickly, but there is no reason that we cannot turn on a dime here and get up in the air and challenge this ball. We are just giving way too much free space and free time on the ball. If we jump for this, even if we don't get a touch, even if we're just flying after it, it again deters this person from being able to take control. And then here, if you want to catch this ball up the wall, you need to kind of have your card positioned here. Like around this area so that's already on the wall so that when the ball makes contact it's not going to bounce off into the wall it needs to kind of carry its momentum with your car up the wall so you need to have your car in a position where the ball can do that by sitting here on the ground you're just going to chip the ball into the wall and it's going to bounce back out and you're not going to be able to maintain any control and this ends up just being a pass out for our opponents and then in this instance, we're following this ball a little too harshly. So if we look here, we, we can guess by this ball's trajectory that it's not going to roll up the wall. It's going to bounce in some way. So by continuing to just follow it over to this side, we are basically taking ourselves out of the play. Because as this ball bounces back, it means we're going to have to turn back around to be able to make a play. Meanwhile, this person can just drive straight forward. Again, luckily in this situation, they miss. And we still have the ball in our possession, which is honestly a miracle. And it's going to result in a goal. Some great patience here. We're lucky this entire play develops, though, because it should be cut off right here by our opponent. Lovely fake here. I love that. Just forcing out a 50 on your terms. Going to make sure that the ball doesn't go anywhere terrible. And then great patience after you get rid of the second player to wait for the third player to be demoed off the field. And we tie the game up. See what we do here again this is going to be our first instance of something that is very very important so if we look at the situation we're in this player he's the last man back so his priority is to make sure you can't put the ball in the net from your perspective putting this ball into the net is going to be rather difficult we don't have a lot of boost we don't have a lot of speed this ball is going to be pretty hard to shoot around this guy and get into the net so with that in mind instead of thinking okay how can i put this into the net the question we should be asking ourselves is how can we take this guy out of the play because in this instance he's gonna jump thinking you're gonna shoot if you just take this ball and hit it to the backboard it'll bounce back out and now your teammates from behind can push forward and get a relatively free shot assuming they beat out the other opponents but by trying to like hover behind this ball and make a play on it yourself, you're just buying time one for your opponents to get back. And number two, you're making this guy's life way, way easier. So in this instance, we don't even want to take any time here. Just get up, pop it off the backboard and allow your teammates to come in for the shot. Look for ways to create opportunities for your teammates. Don't necessarily look for ways that you create opportunities for yourself. Here, go, go, go fast, go fast, your teammates are leaving, go, go, your ball, your ball. Again, look at, we're just giving the opponent free touches. We see Oblivion's flipping back, go, just go for the ball, as fast as possible, apply pressure. Just giving way too much space, allowing our opponents to do 
what they want. There's a good challenge. See, when, when the ball is threatening on our own net, we go fast, right? So we see, okay, need to go. We go, we got a block. When we want to try to create pressure on our opponent's side of the field, we're just giving them way too much space. Here in this instance, you're not going to be able to really make a touch on this ball. You're kind of just waiting for it to come down. So here, what I would like to see is make yourself useful. Don't just wait for the ball because you have an opponent right here. Because you can't really make a play on the ball, make a play on the player. Get this guy out of the way. That way, the ball sits in open space. Maybe a teammate can come over. Maybe you can even stay on the play if this guy's out of it. Or at the very least, you buy time for your defense to get reset. By just kind of sitting here, you're just inviting a free touch in once again. Pads again in this instance, very good. I don't necessarily like ending up on this same side as the field as everyone else. Once we get our 23 boosts, we see both our teammates on the backboard. It would be okay to turn back this way and let them play the ball across. And then as the ball comes across, if we can work back on it, we can turn in. Instead of kind of ending up in this hodgepodge of a location where all of our team is in the same spot. We got an awkward touch. Luckily, we do gain control. And then again, this is just another instance of trying to do too much. So you have control of this ball. You're low boost. You're not able to get that corner. In this instance, the only person we really care about is Blixty here and how he's approaching the ball. What we want to do is we just want to make sure that he doesn't have a free path around us. So with that in mind, we just want to put our car behind this ball, block it off as much as possible, goal side, force him into a 50-50 here, and make sure that that challenge is as safe as possible. By attempting to play it around him, we've now just given him a free touch. Luckily, our team's there to bail us out. Rush it, rush it, rush it, rush it. That's good. And again, we're trying here to do a little too much. So again, we attack this ball very slowly. Luckily, these guys are just far enough away that their boost doesn't result in them getting a block. This is about as close as you can get to getting a block without getting a block. You can get the same result by just attacking this ball quickly, chipping it off the backboard. But we luckily luck out and they don't get a block on us. Now, to follow this play up, we're again going to see the very important idea of creating opportunities for our teammates. So again, we've just sent both of the opponents out of the play. There's only one back, and look, again, he's jumping. He's up in the air. He's trying to block out whatever he can. If you just use this boost, take this ball directly to the backboard. Now that's all three players out of the play. This ball is going to fall back out. You have one teammate here and another teammate, as we saw in Endless Dolphins, also pushing up that would have a free shot. But because, again, we try to take this slow and keep the ball to ourselves, we end up in a situation where we just can't do anything fast enough. This guy applies pressure, and there's no way for us to get the ball into, into the goal by ourselves, because we take too much time. If we just chip that ball to the backboard, that is a free goal for us. As we see, we have two teammates sitting right there waiting for the ball to pop out. But unfortunately, it is not to be. Fine. We're good, we're gonna get the save here. A Little bit awkward on this backboard here. Would be nice to be in a better position. Instead of turning down the wall here, we know we have a teammate behind us, so if this ball pinches towards the net, we have a teammate there. We can actually afford to stay up the wall so we can challenge this guy. Again, too much space is being given, but it's fine, we do get the clear. Whoa, that is unfortunate, okay. So there's not really much that can be done here other than potentially trying to maintain a little bit more control of this ball and playing it not in the direction of our opponents. If we maybe can bang this out a little more down the middle of the field, maybe we have a bit more say in what happens. We don't even need to get a massive clear because our teammates are coming back, but we do play it right to the opponent and allows the attack to continue. Unfortunately, it does look like we should have had a clear. Unfortunately, some of those backboard reads can be pretty nasty and can result in just bounces that are just out of reach. So that's all right. Interesting touch from our teammate. Should result in control here. Oh boy. Oh boy. Anyone? Okay. So this all comes down to two things. Number one, you have boost here. You're good. 
I would like to see you using it to catch up to this ball. You take too long to decide that you want to catch it, too long to recognize that you have the space, so now you can't catch it. So now, okay, that's fine, we're just going to take the ball to the wall. But again, you're trying to make this more difficult than it needs to be. Because you're just sitting flat on the ground and trying to catch this, like, on the bounce so you can, like, pinch it out. Instead of just getting your car on the wall early so you can just control it. If you had your car, instead of being here, you had it, like, here on the wall. This ball is just going to land on you. You can control it. You can do a whole bunch of stuff. But as soon as that ball bounces off the corner and becomes a free ball for the opponent, you are in a world of trouble. Grab this mid boost. Again, too slow to it. We want to try to deny this guy as much as possible. We get this pad. Immediately use it to go get this boost. We're just too nonchalant about our movement around the field, it seems. And again, way too much hesitation on who's going for this ball. Someone just needs to go. Like right here, this ball, relatively loose. If someone rushes it, there's a chance we get a 50-50. But again, we're just giving free possession over to the opponent. And it's just allowing them to get free clears without any pressure on the ball. As first man, it's really important to identify when you are first man and when you can just go for the ball. As first man, your main job is to just get in the face of the opponents and make sure they can't make the plays they want to make. And again, in this instance, we're just too nonchalant in approaching the ball. We try to do too much with it. We get a pretty bad touch, and it just bounces out to the midfield. This situation, very easy. Ball bouncing here. We just want to make sure we get on this side of it. Pinch it around this area, back up the wall. This guy's already jumped. He's out of the play. We just want to gain control of this and take it this way. Instead, we end up getting a touch with the side of our car while flipping to the side. So it just pinches it back out into the midfield and there is no hope for possession whatsoever seven seconds left still down a goal popping it up i like that pop just to try to give ourselves a chance and this dolphin's gonna kick it out to the side and that's gonna be it so all in all the main things that are realized here number one we need to attack the ball faster we are just too nonchalant in driving to the ball without using boost, without going supersonic. We're just inviting the opponents into challenges that we can easily be winning. And we're just giving free space to our opponents on the ball when we could be applying more pressure to them. And then secondly, and something that's very important on the offensive end especially, is we need to stop tunnel visioning on how can I create opportunities for myself. The question in 2v2 or 3v3 should always be how can I create opportunities for my teammates? And in the instances we saw in this game, the answer is pretty simple. When we find ourselves in a 1v1 in the air with the last man back, can we just chip the ball around him, not necessarily on target, but maybe up to the backboard, for them to be able to score a much easier goal? That is something that's very important that needs to be worked on. I do hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If you did, make sure you click that subscribe button right down below so you make sure you don't miss any future Rocket League content. Additionally, if you'd like to be more involved in this community and possibly get a replay analysis of your own, please consider joining my Discord link down in the description. So thank you everybody so much for watching, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. See you later guys.